What's up, people? I'm Landon with LMR.com. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the Dorman and Ford Original PI intake manifolds for the 1999 to 2004 Mustangs. Let's get right into it. Before we get rolling, here's the itinerary for today's video. We're only gonna be talking about the Dorman and the Ford Original PI intake manifolds for the 1999 to 2004 Mustang GTs. I'll start out by talking a little bit about the TSB, then jump into explaining the intake manifolds and the parts you'll need with whichever one you choose, discuss a few scenarios that you may find yourself in, and then we'll take a look at the horsepower and torque data from each intake manifold using our chassis dyno. While we're on the topic of dyno, it's always a friendly reminder that individual results will vary. In this video, I'm also not going to pick sides. I'll let you determine what intake manifold you need for your car by watching the video. Okay, let's start out with a little history lesson. Ford issued the intake manifold TSB on February 4th of 2002, which covered multiple Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury models of different year ranges, with one of those being the 99 to 01 Mustangs. Well, the reason for the TSB was that the first PI intake manifold on 99 to 01 Mustangs featured a plastic coolant crossover. Because of the design, the plastic crossover would develop fatigue cracks and cause coolant seepage from the compromised areas. The fix was the same intake manifold, but with a revised coolant crossover that was changed from plastic to cast aluminum. When doing this, Ford also revised the alternator bracket, which we'll talk about in just a moment. All 2002 to 2004 4.6 liter Mustang GTs would have the revised intake manifold and alternator bracket. Now let's take a look at the two different intake manifolds. I'll start off with the Dorman intake first. This intake fits other Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury models, as well as the 99 to 04 Mustangs with the PI, which stands for Power Improved Cylinder Heads. Dorman supplies an intake manifold with pre-installed individual gaskets, alternator bracket, self-cutting screws, thermostat, thermostat gasket, and some other miscellaneous hardware depending on what model of vehicle that it's being used for. Dimensionally, the Dorman intake shares the same placement for all the components that attach to the manifold, such as the fuel rails and injectors, coil on plugs, EGR bracket, heater hose, plenum, thermostat housing, and temperature sensor. Some of the fastener locations do not have threaded inserts, and this is where you will use the self-cutting screws that Dorman provides in the kit. The only factory hardware that is reused is the intake manifold to cylinder head bolts, plenum to intake manifold bolts, and the alternator bracket bolts. The intake runner design is different, and the manifold chamber is significantly smaller when compared to the Ford intake manifold. This does change where the engine makes peak horsepower and torque, and we'll touch base on that in just a little bit. Now let's talk about the Ford Original PI intake manifold. This OEM Ford intake is the exact same production intake that was used on 2002 to 2004 Mustangs. No revisions have been made and all of the factory hardware is reused. The intake that's branded as Ford Performance is the same intake as the original. It's just sold under the Ford Performance brand. You will need to purchase new intake gaskets and a new thermostat gasket with this intake as the only gasket that is pre-installed is the plenum gasket. This intake will not affect horsepower and torque if you're replacing an existing Ford PI intake. Now, depending on what intake is on your car or the situation that you're in, you'll find yourself needing additional parts. The first scenario you'll run into is if you're replacing a Ford intake with a Dorman intake manifold. This is the easiest scenario since Dorman supplies everything you need relative to the intake to install it on the car. The obvious things that you don't get our supplies and tools. Scenario two would be if you're replacing a dormant intake with a revised Ford intake. You'll need EGR bracket to intake bolts, coil on plug bolts, fuel rail bolts, alternator bracket, intake gasket, thermostat gasket, and only on 99 to 01 cars will you need the two thermostat bolts without the studs and the revised alternator bracket designed for the aluminum crossover. The easiest method for the studded bolts is to simply clearance the stud to clear the alternator bracket. For scenario three, and for some divine miracle, you have a 99 to 01 car and it still has the intake with the plastic crossover, then you'll need all the following mentioned above except for the EGR bracket to intake bolts, coil on plug bolts, and fuel rail bolts. Other than what I just talked about, when swapping intake manifolds on a 99 to 04 Mustang GT, it's important to consider other parts in the area that may need to be replaced as well. These include spark plugs, coil on plugs, a new thermostat, and heater hoses. All the parts that I mentioned thus far are currently available at LMR.com and the links can be found in the video description. All right, so you made it this far. Let's get to the good stuff. Are there horsepower and torque differences between these two intake manifolds? Well, we are very fortunate to have the best tool in the industry to determine rear wheel horsepower and torque, which is a chassis dyno. 
The data that we're going to share with you today is from our 2004 competition Orange GT that has been featured on our YouTube channel in a full video series titled Keeping Comp. Check that one out in the description below. During the restoration process, I put it back on the dyno with the dormant intake manifold still in place. The car had already had a tune-up and the check engine light was fixed from the baseline dyno. We had also switched out and added all the parts associated with the build, that way we would have an apples to apples comparison. The modifications relative to the dyno include the following, cold air intake, off-road mid-pipe, boiler mufflers, aluminum drive shaft, 373 gears, 18-inch SVE Series 2 wheels, 285-35-18 tires, an SCT strategy tune for 93-octane fuel, and the transmission is a 5-speed TR3650, so the pull is going to be made in fourth gear, which is one-to-one. -one. So with the dormant intake manifold, the car made 222.4 horsepower at 5200 RPM and 266.2 pound-feet of torque at 3500 RPM. After that, I went ahead and swapped the intake manifold to the Ford Original Manifold, and then with the Ford intake manifold, the car made 241 horsepower at 4900 RPM and 274 pound-feet of torque at 4300 RPM. So if we take a closer look at the results between the two intake manifolds, peak gain gains were solid at 19 horsepower and 8 pound-feet. More importantly, the curve gains past 3,500 RPM were 25 plus horsepower and 23 plus pound-feet of torque. The increase in horsepower and torque is because of the runner design and the larger chamber volume on the Ford original intake. Now driving the car around on the street, you can definitely feel the difference past 3,500 RPM with the Ford intake. And just a friendly reminder guys, as I can't stress this enough, remember, individual results will vary. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video and found a ton of value in what we showed and discussed. After all, that's our goal with our video content. That's all we have for you today. So until we catch you in the next one, y'all know what to do for all things New Edge Mustang. Keep it right here with the real enthusiasts, LMR.com.